Hey Mike, so here we are in a new Pipes workspace and it looks like we've added another member to the family. There's float pipe alongside steam pipe and power pipe. Tell us about that. You're right, John. So yeah, we now have flow pipe available in your pipes workspaces. So let's uh, just jump in and have a little look, look around. So if I jump into steam pipe, you know, as before, you're able to query your data and data tanks, etc. And now we have the ability to jump between the services. So from the nav, I can jump into power pipe. And as you'd be familiar with, we have dashboards available, scheduled snapshots, etc. And if we jump into flow pipe, we can have a little look around and see what new capabilities we have here. Okay, so this is kind of um, reminding me of AWS, where you know you've got a collection of services, um, and you pick the one you need for the job you need to do. In this case, uh, that's going to be flow pipe. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yesterday we looked at flow pipe running a detect and correct mod in AWS compliance. Let's do something similar today with um, maybe how about Thrifty? Can we install Thrifty? We can indeed. So let's uh, let's install the mod. So I jump into the install mod screen. So straight away you'll see we have our featured mods, which if you've uh, been to the Flowpipe Hub, you'd be familiar with. We're basically showing you, you know, the same set of mods available for install. So same idea Choose as three. like you know with with Powerpipe here, which is you know bring the hub to you. Yeah, that's right, John. It's uh, tried to bring the the hub experience to pipes. So if I go ahead now and. Install Thrifty. So this will be a few seconds, and then we'll be uh, up and running. OK. OK, it's ready and installed. And first thing you'll see is the all the variables that are available to kind of customize you know, the experience with this mod. OK. So if we just want to run this pipeline, I have a feeling we don't need to do anything here. What do you think? I agree. I think, I think this is good to go. It's already detected that we have a, a Slack notifier in the in the workspace and it's defaulted to that. Same with our list of approvers as well, just defaults to our default notifier. Okay. Um, and we need a connection too. It's got one from somewhere, right? That's right. So any any steam pipe connections that the shared from the tenant or identity or even defined in the workspace that are flow pipe compatible will be available for use in flow pipe. And flow pipe is able to connect to steam pipe to uh, to query those connections. So let's search for this detect and correct S3 pipeline. So if I jump in here, sure, let's run the pipeline. So let's go ahead and run this. OK, so here's where we watch the progress. That's right, all the events now from Flowpipe will flow through into pipes, and you'll see the progress as, as things go. So, so this this will, has now spun up, a, spun up a job for this particular pipeline, so we'll start up the job, install the mod. Well, in that's isolation. interesting. So we're actually going to install the mod on the fly. That's correct. Yeah, each and every flow pipe run is completely isolated. It's effectively serverless. OK, so now we can see that the pipeline started, and it's run the query to find the buckets. Let's go ahead and so we can see a notification here telling us we've got 27 buckets without a lifecycle policy. And it's detected one with that lifecycle policy here. We can. We have an option to skip or apply. Let's go ahead and skip that. And let's go ahead and apply the lifecycle configuration on this one. OK. So that response has now been sent back to Flowpipe. And Flowpipe will now be in the process of applying lifecycle life configuration to that bucket. And it's going to tell us here when it's done. That's right. Yeah, we'll get a message once it's done. So if you look inside S3 now at this bucket, we can see there's currently no, no lifecycle rules on the bucket. OK. We can uh, see progress as well through the logs here. So we can see that we're just uh, we're spinning up a container to actually go ahead and run the uh, run the, the correct part of this pipeline. OK, mm -hmm. so now we've got a message. Now we can see that the actual the uh, policies have been applied. I believe you, but let's have a look. Let's have a check. <laughs> I jump into S3 and refresh this now, and we can see that the lifecycle policies have been applied. So didn't need to provide any creds, do anything, just Flowpipe took care of it all. We're waiting on the approval of the next bucket that it found. Um, now, you know, what if nobody happens to be watching that Slack channel and that message is sitting there for a while? What's going to happen? Um, we handled that well. So basically, after a minute of no activity, the pipeline will shut down. 
and we'll wait for a response from from a user. So you know, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be next week. So I don't get billed for the time waiting, basically. That's right. Okay, cool. So I don't get kind of old having to answer these messages one at a time, but I think we can set this up to run automatically, you know, hands off, right? Um, how do we do that? Sure, let's have a look. So if we jump back up to to our mod and check out the variables. So firstly, one of the variables you can set is the list of approvers. And currently we've got it set to be our Slack no notification. Um, but if we actually clear that, it will just automatically apply the, the default response for the, uh, for the detection. So we won't okay. need to have a human you know, provide that okay. response. And I think we have to tweak um, one other thing, right? There is, yeah. So in the S3 section here, we also have a uh, default action to apply. So currently it's just set to notify, but we could equally set that to apply lifecycle configuration by default. I think I probably would want to do this in an automated fashion if I know that I always want the lifecycle policy applied. So um, so there it is. Good. Uh, let's talk about that Slack integration for a minute because I've set this up you know, before. Um, it was standalone flow pipe and it wasn't a fun exercise. So, um, you know, I think it's a lot nicer now. Let's, uh, let's see how that, how that looks. Sure. So if I now go back up to the, the organization level here and go to my integrations, we can go ahead and create a new integration and have an option for Slack. So let's go. And this and, is uh, going to be, this, this is going to be created at the org level. And so it'll be available to any workspace, uh, in the org that needs it. That's correct, yeah. So yeah, if I go ahead and set this up, let's just choose a name. Go ahead and create. Then I'll land into the, the setup page and we'll just choose a, a default channel to post to. Click allow and we're done. And that's it, we're done? Yeah. Uh, nice, nice. So, um. Uh, we've seen before the GitHub integration for uh, PowerPipe mods, so you can install a custom mod for PowerPipe and, you know, it kind of refresh on changes pushed to a, a branch or a tag. Um, that same thing happens here, right, for FlowPipe? It works exa exactly the same in FlowPipe. Everything you're used to with GitHub and PowerPipe works the same in, in FlowPipe. Okay. I'm seeing all kinds of, um, of common infrastructure here, right? The GitHub integration is shared across these components. You know, we saw Flowpipe able to use uh, Steampipe, Steampipe connections, uh, able to use the notifiers and uh, integrations that were defined at the org level and made available into the workspace, right? Um, and all with really, in some cases, almost no configuration. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, we've really tried to make like make it easy to kind of get to the services that you actually care about. You can use Steampipe as you were before querying your data. You can use PowerPipe to you know, run your dashboards against your steam pipe data. You can run flow pipe and install your custom mods or the, the out of the box mods that we have. Equally, you can you know have flow pipe talk to steam pipe talk to your data tank and with basically little or no configuration. So it's super easy to kind of you know go as, as light or as deep into this as you want. And you know we're we're pretty excited about where we can add in the future with this. Really nice work from you and the team, Mike. Thanks for showing us. Right, thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If your organization could benefit from Turbot Pipes, get started today with a free developer account at turbot.com/pipes. See the video description for links and details.